according to who? That is the World Health Organization. By 2030, mental health problems, particularly depression, will be the leading cause of mortality and morbidity globally. Can you just imagine that? How grim does that sound? That that mental ill health issue, depression, will be the leading cause of people dying globally by 2030. Now that is statistics and I've grown up learning that we don't have to be statistics. We don't have to, in other words, what I'm trying to say is that the fact that something is saying that is what will happen means that we can beat the odds of that. And I know that from my own personal story because I have beaten the odds of what, according to my story, should really have happened to me. In other words, what I'm saying is that considering the adverse childhood experiences that I had, including sexual abuse, I shouldn't be here because I've had more than three aces. So where I'm going with this is that if we are intentional, deliberate and focused on this big issue, we can defy this statistic that's saying depression will be the leading cause of death by 2030. And we have to start with our children. Hi, I'm Toyno Kanuga, and I am the author of Hosh to Raw. Hosh to Raw is my memoir. It's a true story of love, childhood trauma, but most importantly, my healing, my recovery. From other videos, you'll see that I talk about mental wellness, about how we need to move from a level of depression to expression. You'll see other videos where I have spoken at length about how we need to be more intentional about how we go about our lives, talk about what we're going through, share our story to heal and to heal others. And today I'm going to talk about steps to take to prevent childhood depression because in other videos I've said that the elderly, uh, the, the death in the elderly has slowed down because of our technological advancement but sadly what's very grim whilst that is a positive thing that wow people are dying at a later age which is fantastic news on the other side we are seeing that the younger generation are dying now that is sad and depression mental ill health is a big cause of that why <laughs> i wish i could answer that but from growing up, I know that I had a lot of depressive symptoms. I know I had suicidal thoughts. I actually attempted at some stage. But by the grace of God, I'm here. And I know that the statistic that I just read out by the World Health Organization was a grim one. But we can defy the odds of that if we're all intentional. And I want to talk to you today about the steps that we can take. I've got my notes here so that I don't go out of sync. And I'd like to say some things that we can start doing to ensure that 
by 2030, depression is no longer the leading cause of death, particularly in our children and young adults. So the first step that we can take <laughs> is knowing the risk of childhood depression. So in my case, um, there was a lot of factors that, that led to me being depressed and I didn't even know that I was depressed. So I'll just put that out now that I didn't know I was depressed. It was after my research as an adult that I realized that, wow, Toy and you were depressed when I was one, when I wanted to isolate, when I would be in the midst of people, but I felt lonely still when people would laugh and I wouldn't want to join in when people would say, Toy in, stop doing this. And I would just say, leave me alone, lash out and run away and never want to talk. There were so many symptoms that were there that were indicating that I was depressed. Why? I'd gone through a lot of adverse childhood experiences. So the step one is know the risk of childhood depression. So there's so many things that could contribute to a child being depressed. Now, number one is if there has been a death in the family. And so if, if there has been a sibling that has died and the rest of the siblings are there, we need to make sure that as, as the adults are dealing with this, we are intentional about the children who have lost their siblings too. So we need to seek help for them. So the history um, of depression in children could be as a, as a result of maybe a death in the family. So know the risk. So if someone has died in the family, there's a risk that depression could happen to the rest of the family. So that is one. Number two is a history of depression in one or both parents. Now, some of these depressive symptoms might not be obvious. So in my case, I know that there might have been some traumatic events in uh, in my family that I, that went unnoticed. But now that we know things, we can't unknow. We need to be more intentional and look at the signs. So if someone has started to uh, exhibit some symptoms of depressive um, ways of living, then the rest of the family, we have to take note. So, and with my case, uh, a history of emotional, physical or sexual abuse. In my case, it was sexual abuse. So for me, I had depression because of not just sexual abuse, but all other ones. But sexual abuse, I think, was a main one, most importantly, because it was uh, from a very close family member. But it could be, have been from anyone, and that is a sign of depression. So that's why we need to put our ears on ground and just like reveal those people because we are destroying the lives of our children if we don't reveal those people who are doing evil things to our children. So having a chronic illness, if uh, a child has been diagnosed with an illness um, that is debilitating and life-threatening, depressive symptoms could go in. So, so this is another one. And of course, there's a, the other one where a parent has been in a war zone. So everyone knows that wars, you know, is to fight. So if someone's been in a war zone and back home, uh, they could be depressed. So let's not take it lightly because all the flashbacks and everything could lead. So that number one is know the risk of childhood depression. Um, you know, the risk factors. OK, so and then number two, protect kids from childhood depression but how do we do this so in this case i would say have an open and honest communication with the child so of course if it's something um like the death of a sibling uh in the family it will be very sort of like difficult if you are also as a parent or an auntie or an uncle also going through difficulties we need to seek help for us so that as a family you can heal together so have it and then gradually you start to talk because as i said in other videos the opposite of depression is expression and once you start to express your feelings you of course the pain will still be there but it's more manageable and it doesn't paralyze your whole life so you you don't forget, but you live with it and move on and accept that that's it, that, you know, accept what is. So that's um, um, develop, you know, that 
honest communication. Um, and then also the third one I'll say is seek help for childhood depression. So once we've uh, known the risk and then we protect the kid, the kids from childhood depression by having that open discussion, then we seek help for childhood depression. So we know that, oh, there's something that's happened in the family. We can't let this go by just hiding it. We have to seek help. So a therapist, a psychologist, um, someone who can help you intentionally to talk about things. So you can't prevent in its entirety childhood depression um, because it's feelings, it's emotions, but you can help prevent it from going so far so that um, the children or child doesn't go down a slippery slope into suicidal thoughts because that's the main thing that we want to help prevent. Um, that's where I went to but I, I, by his grace uh, I didn't <laughs> go all the way. So those are the three steps that I want to talk about and to say that to step to, uh, towards the steps to help prevent childhood depression we have to do those and be intentional, deliberate about how we talk about these things. <sighs> yeah, this is deep. This is deep for me. Um, and I pray that we take this very seriously so that we can defy that statistic that by 2030, depression will become the leading cause of death. Because I know we can get there. Guys. I hope you continue to join me in these sessions because they are vital and there are links below if you want to know a lot about me. I've got my ebooks that are free. You can pick one or two up to see what I'm all about. But most importantly, Hosh to Roar's your baby. You'll see why these are so close to my heart. So guys, remember your inner child has a voice. It really does. Be expressive, not depressive. Don't suppress it, guys. Let it roll. Thanks for watching. Bye.